Uprisers, good morning. It is Trisha LaCroix with Sacred Uprising Institute and Conference. And today we are going to be talking with <clears throat> Courtney Walsh. She is an author and she is going to be di discussing um, the Wendy Syndrome. So let's bring Courtney on. So we're having some issues. So if we lose everybody, we are going to be doing a live video and we'll do it over on Instagram. Yay! Thank you so far. I know, I know. I I was telling I was telling Courtney earlier, I had to I just did a video on Facebook Live and I had to do it four times and it was only a two minute video. So hopefully this will work. So Courtney, the the uh the Wendy syndrome. I'm so excited. You and I discussed it yesterday, and I am so stoked for this two-part series. So let's dive in. Okay. So you actually held back to you for a minute, and after I explained to you a little bit of what it was, why don't you give the example, and then I'll kind of fill in. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay. So you dated someone who you think was kind of like a Peter Pan, and you played Wendy? Yeah, so uh, the the gentleman that I dated uh, before, Charles, I, I dated this gentleman for about a year, and then I went on a year and a half of not dating anybody. He he literally would say he was a Peter Pan, and he is a, a, a 60 year old man who um, is in and out of jobs constantly. I saw the red flags, and yet I still got into a relationship with him, thinking that it wasn't a pattern. It was just something that happened to him over and over and over again. <laughs> and what ended up happening <clears throat> is that I started supporting him financially. Um, I was taking care of the bills. I was paying uh, the, the rent. I was paying for everything and uh, the food. Um, and he just sat in dreamland on the couch, and it was – it was really, a, what really bothered me, what, um, while it was, it, he was also an energy vampire, so he would suck the living life out of me. Mm -hmm. And I loved him, though. I really, really, truly loved him. Yeah. But he also had one that is very pretty words. He writes be beautifully, but there's no action behind the words. So I look at that now and go, that's not love. Love is action. It's really easy to throw words out. Yeah. So I, um, I had to leave yeah. um, for, for many reasons because I didn't want my daughter to think that that was okay. Right. And I also needed to be in um, a position where I wanted a partner. And I kept saying that to him. I kept saying, I want a partner. I'm not asking for you to take care of me. I want a partner. Go at least get a job at Home Depot making 100 bucks a week. I don't care. Yeah. Just, I need an exchange of energy going on here. And he literally refused to do it. And I left. Yeah. Um, and so it's, um, so that and, and then, my... and then ladies and gen gentlemen, she goes and meets the love of her life who's sending her roses and bringing home candy and kissing her feet. Right. So once yeah. you got yeah. through your Wendy syndrome of trying to take care of him, so on his shadow, you know, he's, right. he's off with the lost boys flying around, you know, I'm never going to grow up being stubborn and being irresponsible emotionally and financially in your case. Um, yes. then yeah, so that wasn't working for you. Right. And yeah. what's interesting, and I, I was telling my daughter about this conversation you and I had, and she said something really interesting. So I hate cooking. I freaking hate cooking. I love and so like yeah. with the, oh my God, I hate it like with a passion. Even since I was a kid, I hate cooking. And, um, my daughter made a comment to me cause I said to her after our conversation, I said, you know, it's interesting. I said, you know, when I was with David or any other relationship, I hated to cook and I wouldn't cook. I hated it. But with Charles, I don't mind it. I mean, it's not my favorite thing. I do it because he works till late at night, but the exchange of energy is so, is so even it. It's like, I can't, I do it not because it's an obligation. Now I do it because I want, I love him. Right. And Courtney said to my daughter, Courtney said to me, she goes, mom, even your food tastes different because yeah. your intent is different. Yeah. And I was like, wow. It's made with love, not resentment. <laughs> it's made, yeah, yeah, right, exactly. It's this exactly. special sauce, yeah. Right. Okay. So I'm going to dive in now. That was perfect because you saved me a lot of blabbing. And and I can, <laughs> no, I'm not saying you blabbed. I'm, I'm the blabber. We're, we, are, we are blabbers together. 
Right, so, right. But since we have a half hour today, right, and then we have another half hour on Thursday, that is a great yes. summary. It's someone, and this can be male or female, it is not a gender thing. Someone right. who yes. is a drain on your resources, on your energy, on your time, on your emotions, and who doesn't give back. Or they give back in a way maybe they think they're contributing, but they're not giving back in a way A, you're asking for, or B, you need. Right. Okay? Because either there's some stubborn resistance, and then suddenly now you're mom. And the rebel comes up and he's like, well, fuck you. I'm not going to do that because you want me to. Right. I'm going to do right. it when I want to and the way I want to. And you either can receive it or you can reject it. Right. And so right. that's part that falls back again to us for signing up for the martyr rule. For saying, oh, I'll be that's the right. one who, you know, just, what did you think? Fairies are p picking up your socks from the floor and making your dinner and, and doing the dishes after a full-time job. I have so many women coming to me who are burnt out Wendy's. And I've been there and we've all been there. And the Peter Pan on the flip side you know, seems to skate through life, but they're probably oftentimes highly anxious and worried yes. and trying to prove themselves and trying to go here, there and everywhere, following their own little scattered energy. And they don't know where they're going to land and they, they don't have commitment. Okay. So that's, that's right. the, I never want to grow up. I never want to lose my freedom and I never want to be put in a cage and I don't want shackles on my balls, you know? <laughs> Sorry, but that's right, what the Peter right. Pan syndrome is. That's a whole, yeah. we'll, we'll tackle that next week. But right now we're looking at, at the Wendy part of it. And then there are the cast right. of characters that weave in and out. Like I put in the description, the crocodiles, the mermaids and the captain hook. Okay. So, right. so basically as Wendy's, as women, I'm going to focus now on the feminine role and on, right. or on my gay friends who play this role as Wendy, whatever. Right. Um, again, it's not gender, it's more energy, but it is a lot of conditioned gender stuff too, if we're honest. That, okay. Right. Exactly. So, so I know friends who are, you know, young in their 20s and 30s who, who do this, who are, you know, either stay at home moms or they work a part time job or whatever, and they are burnt out, toast, crispy fried. And mm -hmm. it's not to say that the husband or the partner or the boyfriend isn't working hard too, doing his own thing. It's to say that when he comes home, maybe he's tapped out from the world and isn't in the nurturing space of co creating the home life together, which is crucial. So a lot of us have it backwards. <clears throat> the women are over functioning, over giving, overdoing, yes. doing both roles, yes. not giving the men right. and the boys the space to step up, grow up and have our backs. Right. So it's our fault. And it's not a blame thing when I say fault. It's just maybe it's our responsibility to shift the dynamic. Yeah, you have to take ownership of it, right? And it that's can't what change I, I, if you know, don't look at it. Yeah, you, if, whatever yeah. you deny or repress or run away from, right. you keep coming back in your face over and over and over. Right? You resist persistence. Right. We all right. know this. We've all be bumped up against those edges, okay? So, right. so for me, the Wendy syndrome had manifested in kind of chasing after these guys who were either elusive and famous. And I still sometimes do it. And I kick myself and I go, that's not the guy who's going to, you know, sit and rub your feet. That guy's too busy. He doesn't have time for you, you know? And so then you talk yourself in and out of, oh, well, he's high profile or high level. My dad was a workaholic. My dad was out there as a superintendent of schools who was visible everywhere we went. It was Jim, Jim, Mr. Walsh, Mr. Walsh, Mr. Walsh. You know, he was like the unofficial mayor of the town of Brooklyn right. where he was a superintendent of schools. And then before that, he'd been in the Boston school system for many years, rose up through the ranks and became like the second in command. So he was like running, almost like running a city or running a state even. It's like a mayor governor kind of job. You have the school system, you have the school committee, you have, which, you know, breaks down into the school committee, the teachers, the students, the lawsuits that come up. The, he had an architect uh, and he was dealing with the budget and he had three full time in the day back in the day they called them secretaries three three full time secretaries and a wife wow. and a wife and the man was uh, you know pushed and was so ambitious and was so relentless that he kind of burnt out and and died at 69 years old which was very tragic for all of us um, we weren't ready for him to go you know that was brutal so I kind of made a vow to myself as I'm in the hospital room with my dying father and the breathing machines are going, I'm not marrying a workaholic. The man I marry will have to either be like someone who would be a stay-at-home dad or a beta. In some way, he will have to let me take the stage, the spotlight. He will let me be the one who chases the trophies and, and blah, 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 blah. And I've revised that along the way to include, okay, perhaps a partnership has to be equal in the sense of, <laughs> like, he doesn't have to be like changing all the papers and making all the meals. That doesn't work either. That's just reverse. Right, you know, it's right. the same problem. So a partnership of equals is where we matter. It isn't just your thing and my thing, and then we come together and we do our thing. That's cool. That's part of a divine partnership. But it's our energy, our combined energy put out into the world is what we came together to do.
And it's That's our right. karmic mission, if you will, which is bigger than both of our personal individual missions. It really is. Right. So Wendy has to get a little more Tinkerbell, you know, the sassy kind of fairy who stomps. And yes, she gets jealous and insecure and wants Peter's time and attention and affection. But she flits and flies and has her own freedom and does what she wants, right? And then, of course, Captain Hook would be all the hooks we have that drain us. Things that are around right. us that are, you know, playing villain or... When you said the term emotional vampire, I find that really an interesting loaded kind of new agey term, but I know what you mean. That just right, means yes. that we have incompatible core vibrational frequencies. It means right, we're trying right. to align our frequencies and we're trying, we're trying, and it's like jazz and we're trying, we're trying, we're improvising. Sometimes you hit it and that you go to that higher level together. Other times it's right. just discordant and it's not harmonious and it's too competitive or too... Um, like cats in an alleyway, you know, the, the sound of the screeching mm -hmm. cats fighting in an alleyway. Right, right. It's that energy, right? So right. if we want to, you know, not go in the extreme of the Peter Pan or the Wendy, we need to look at all the cast of characters that come through our lives. And again, it's not about curating your experience or cutting people off or move away from toxic energies or you live in your safe little happy bubble where you never interact with other people or energies. I love interacting with people of all walks of life, of all life backgrounds and experiences. To me, that is the juice of being human. And I would right. never deprive myself of that experience. Right. I did for like a year and a half, I went and hermited up in Northern Maine. And I needed that time to process and heal and to release some stuff that had been going on in my life and shift. And it's been wonderful. It was great. Now kind of easing back into being in a place where I have a good support network and my friends are here, even though it's a temporary kind of visiting time, it's a recharge, right? And a refresh. Right. And then I'll kind right. of go back out and do whatever I'm going to do this summer, which I have a couple of, you know, pots in the, on the, on the stove. So we'll see what happens there. Um, so, so for me to overcome the Wendy syndrome and transmute that energy, I had to put myself back in the equation. I couldn't just be, I, I still haven't cracked this. I still put other people first and it's not good. It's not healthy. I think when men are saying put others first and serve and love and give, I so applaud that, support it. Go boys, go do that. Cause guess what? Women have been doing everything for you. They, we've been doing it all. We've been making your beds, making your meals, kissing your ass, licking your balls. We've done it all. Okay, and they haven't had to step up and grow up because we uh, have enabled them. We have not empowered right, them. Right, yes. And so it's that, why did you bring the dish to the sink but not put it in the sink or help? Hey, wash it, dry it, put it away. Oh my God, those next three steps, the toilet paper roll. These are the things that make women mental. Mental. That we are sitting there doing, being the fairies of you know the universe, cleaning the house and making it perfect. And that's not maybe a value core priority for these guys. And I'm not playing right. all men with this brush. There are plenty of domestic no, you know, no. dudes who really like carry that vibe. And that's more their, you know, they're the ones who cook. They're the ones who clean. They're the ones who run the kids around. That's great. It's still more rare than the, the norm though. The norm is. It, it's, it, yeah, it's very rare. And I'll say um, like with the relationship that I talked to you about, I had to be the mother and that's how I saw it. It's not and sexy that's for anyone. And I hated it. I'm like, that's not what I wanted. That. It sucks. No, yeah. no, it's horror. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. But then I'm in this relationship now. There are no roles. We all do everything. And he's planning the dates and he brings nice. the surprises. Yeah. And he, you know, like last night he got home from work at nine o'clock and then he was up putting up more drapes as soon as he walked in the door. <laughs> it's like, it, it's like, this is how our relationship is. It is so equal energy and i will say this is the first time i feel like i'm a little lagging on the energy because i don't know what else to do <laughs> this is okay no that's what, but you're that's what everyone to do. deserves you're supposed to lean back and receive that is what the feminine yes. is designed to do to receive to allow to bask, yes. to be served to be loved to be worshipped to be adored we have gotten yes. that so wrong we are the ones doing for them and and basically creating a whole generation of toddlers who can't do even the most basic things for themselves. Right. And, right. and, and, right. you know, mutual love, responsibility, and energy, Laurie Green. You're absolutely exactly, right. Exactly, That Laurie. says it right there yeah. in a nutshell. Perfect. You go, girl. Yeah, yeah. mutual, 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 mutual. And so, um, yeah. with, yeah, with my parents, they were, I have to say, they were kind of both, I would say, more feminist and more advanced and more evolved. My mm -hmm. mom did carry a lot of the household stuff, and my dad was more out in the world. And mom wore the pants at home, and dad wore the pants out in the world, whatever. They played the typical 50s, 60s, 70s right. gender yeah. couples. But then they switched it up over time. 
And she went back to school and got her art degree at 50, which was amazing, and, and became an interior right. designer. And, and yeah, I love it because she was the suburban housewife and there were all these kids with green ta hair and tattoos and everything, right? And so, right, right. yeah, and so he was rising and rising and rising. His star was shining and shining and shining. She was supporting him behind the scenes and a little bit of that sort of, it's a terrible term, but trophy wife, you know, and, but she always had such a beautiful, rich inner life that was way more than that, obviously. That was because she was beautiful and she was Miss Massachusetts and a model and all this stuff. So she would kind of, you know, be seen as the arm candy, even though there was so much more going on, you know? Right. And then, like right. I said, she went back, got her degree, and then she kind of, started to get more developed in her multidimensional, you know, she wasn't just playing mom or, or wife or whatever. Um, and so, and he, he always supported that. He was her biggest cheerleader, her biggest fan, and he funded everything and he never resented it. He, he wrote the checks gleefully, joyfully. What do you need? You need painting materials for your art studio. You need a, a room to yourself. Does yeah, this have good life right. for you? He was amazing like that. Like very right, yeah. encouraging and helpful. He wasn't always that way earlier in their marriage. He kind of had to be like, hello, there's another whole person here in this situation. Right. It's not just about you and your show. It's us, you know? So, so that's, that's, those are the role models I grew up with. And they were best friends, partners, lovers, and they were together 43 years until his last breath. Literally, she was there for his dying breath. She read him the serenity prayer. And on the last word of that prayer, he was gone. So, so she overcame the Wendy syndrome and I saw her multiple times wanting to go on strike, leave us, you know, she just got saturated and wanted to run away and wanted to be the Peter Pan who had the freedom right, to go right. and do and, and, you know, have all the fun. And, um, so she had to find her own ways. And, and I think that's important for all women. Hi, hi Tracy from Magic Mountain. <laughs> I can't, this is so distracting, this weird thing, but I think it's fun. And it's cool too. <laughs> I love all of you who are tuning in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you know what's it, you know what'd be interesting to talk about is some of the uh, patterns or the red flags that that women can be aware of when they're getting into a relationship if they're dealing with a Peter Pan. Yeah. Well, it's a really basic, stupid thing, but I've now kind of realized if I hit the like and and the share and the comment button on somebody's social media and they ignore that for a certain amount of time, I'm starting to wane in my interest. And so I'm not gonna be your mm -hmm. hand girl or your audience or your ego puffer upper. I, I need some of that love coming back my way, my direction. And it's, right. it's a weird measurement stick, but it's important because it shows that they went out of their way, they're paying attention, they're supporting, they're hearing you, even if they don't always get it. And even if they don't always know how to apply it, they're trying. And I always appreciate right. the efforts. I appreciate those love winks and those, I see you, I got you, I'm here. You know, however it shows up, that's one way. Um, the red flags, I'm not so interested in red flags now as I am in white flags of surrender um, to what is it that I want. The clearer I get on what I want and what's nourishing and nurturing for me, the more that shows up in my life in all areas. Yeah. So yeah. I think we so, get a lot of these dating sites and then these things are like, look out for this and look out for that. We're already so paranoid and stressed and on edge and tense about this stuff because it's so charged and loaded anyway. I'd like to take red flags out of it and move into what feels good. I like that. What yeah, are the white know, flags of surrender, good. baby? Yeah. This is, let's just go with the flow yeah. and have fun. Um, yeah. So if you feel good, if you feel good in your heart and in your belly, around someone, when you think of them, when you look at them, when you imagine a possible future with them, if you don't like squeeze up and get tight, but you feel relaxed and open and it's expansive and like your energy is moving this way instead of crunching up, that's a white flag. That's a keep going, keep going. Surrender to that feeling of comfort, right? Like the best love stories I've ever heard are not these like, you know, passionate, steamy, you know, wild, intense things. Those tends to flame out they're more like we became yes. friends then we became lovers then he became the you know most important person i've ever known i you love know, and it, I, I i described the love with charles and i that it's not this emotional roller coaster like you said because those burn out it is a the peaceful work. sunday morning with the windows open and the birds are chirping and it's yeah. easy yes so it's not to say it's perfect no but it's easy easy it's in easy. your body and easy in your spirit easy when you feel yep. When you feel at peace, you feel at rest, you feel like um, you can be yourself and you're not going to be judged. Or if you are judged or criticized, it's more, it's more like out of self, 
you know, loving correction. Uh, and it's right. mutual and it's gentle and it's not like, you suck, you're a dick. And I've been there, believe me, and I've been there even yeah. fairly recently. Yeah. I have to get rid of this thing. Huh? Yeah. So even fairly recently, I was so frustrated and so mad and so hurt with someone that I just lit in and lashed out. And I mean, we've all been on the receiving end of that. I and mean, it's not fun in either direction, but it had pent up and built up in me for like a couple of years of like, are you fucking mm -hmm. kidding me? And this was a giant Peter Pan. He was a walking red flag. And I should have known from the start, this is a mistake, but we probably had some karmic and energetic things to work right. out. And right. so we, you know, went through that and uh, he still does the shit. And I just try not to get hooked or play the game anymore because I have a different game right. I want to play. I want to play a higher level game. I want to le level up into a deeper, longer lasting, genuine, mutual affection and intimacy. Like what you've now manifested. So congratulations. Yeah, You're showing it's possible yeah. for all of us out here who are working towards right. that. Yeah. And it, right. as you know, it's an inside shift. You have to go, well, this doesn't work. That, right. Thanks it's an inside mind. shift. Which yeah. Is yeah, which is why I went through a year and a half yeah. of not dating in between because I had to make changes within so my inner world would reflect my outer world and that's what I received. Yeah. To go from from somebody that <clears throat> that wasn't a partner yeah. that was that you know we talk about it, he has a he has a huge following over 5000 followers on Facebook. However, he, you know, every woman, every ex-girlfriend, there's always, he would send them emojis and smiley faces. And I'd be like, what are you doing? He wouldn't even mention me on Facebook. Right. He, you know, there wasn't, he wasn't, and I, and he's not providing, and I'm not saying paying for me, but being a partner and helping to pay the bills. Well, so then now you and feel dishonored, you feel disrespected, you I feel felt, invisible, you feel unheard, you feel unimportant. Yes. You feel yes. all these disgusting, yucky. All these That's the crocodile, yeah. by the way. And that is, again, inside job. Okay. Okay. So the crocodiles yeah, come right. and they kind of eat at us and they go, Ooh, this doesn't feel good. I don't like this. This right. doesn't feel safe. Right. I don't feel like I want to open my heart or my vagina to this person. I don't feel like I want right. to open my home or my bed or my mind or my spirit to someone who isn't, it isn't an even flow or who right. lashes out and gets mean. And then I lash back and that's, that's shadow work. That's shadow boxing and shadow dancing. So that's crocodiles. Okay. The mermaids are kind of these sirens that just lean back on the rock and sing their song and people come to them and are inspired to jump out of their boats. The sailors, right, are inspired to right, jump out of yeah. their boats and swim to the mermaid. So, right. you know, if we're kind of busy trying to avoid the crocodiles and the red flags and all that, we're not kind of basking in our own light and our own glow You're and in receptivity right. where we're emitting a signal that says, I'm here, I'm available, I'm ready, let's go. That doesn't mean that we can't be excited, enthusiastic, passionate, you know, flirty, playful. It just means that we, you said it perfectly, he initiates that masculine mm -hmm. partner that you have now. My father was an old school guy like that. I think women totally appreciate still in this day and age, and we can be feminists and we can make moves and be bold and, and get over our comfort zones and all this stuff we're advised to do all the time, but we so love it when the guy steps up. Shows up yeah. and steps and, up and grows yeah. up in all yeah. the important yeah. ways, important meaningful ways of I'm coming to get you. You know, he claims her. He shows up, he says, you're mine. And that's not in a property way. That's not a possession way. That's in a primal caveman. Let's do this. I want you. No ambivalence, no confusion, no letting insecurities or shyness or timidity or excuses or other women or, or booze or drugs or any the family dynamics or your past. Get in the way. Just we're doing this. And he takes yeah, you by and the, the and hand. And that's something. And dancing. Yeah. And they that's dance. something. Yeah. Yeah, and that's something that's important that women should, I really, I really want people, women to understand this. There wasn't a single moment from the time, because Charles and I met online, from our first text that I, that I ever had to wonder, I wonder if he's into me. Because from the first text until today, it's been steady. There's been no wavering. There's no weakness in his chain. As soon as we met, he deleted the the app that we met on. I deleted it, and we've been moving forward. Yeah. So there's never been a question how that man feels about me. And and a Peter Pan, I'm sorry, you have those questions. You wonder because they're off doing their their thing. Yeah. Not this man. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And that solid oak that you're talking about, that masculine presence, that divine golden kind of 
he is someone you want to, you know, go and make a life and babies and, and, you know, go on the road and travel and have fun adventures with, that's someone who emits a pure, clear signal. And it isn't that old fuckboy player, you know, Casanova, whatever stud thing, even though sometimes that's fun, that's playful, that's an energy, cowboy energy, all that stuff can get in there. Um, but it really, there's something underneath that's more solid and more dependable, okay? And right. that can be cultivated, right. that can be worked on, that can be, you know, what, for me, a, honestly, a big feeling of I get with that is someone who's sober, a guy who's sober, a guy who isn't always out drinking or, or stoned all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's something I've learned from my own painful personal experiences. And from mm -hmm. my, you know, grandfather, who I often talk about on Facebook, who got sober and was sober the last 60 years of his life. And my grandmother had been the one to say, I'm taking your kids, we're going to your family down in Florida, and you better either choose the bottle or me or us, because it's the bottle or your family. And he chose his family. And he made the right fucking choice, as far as I'm concerned. Right, you know, right. I don't think yeah. I'd be here. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so, you know, it, it, the substance abuse is not love. Okay, if there's substances or right. or career workaholism or other women, how would you, would you trust someone? How would you want to open to that person and go deeper? How would you want to share your life with that partner? If they are recovering from all of that dynamics, that's a different story. If they're working on themselves and sincere and genuine and looking for one partner to share something, and, they're, and this is like taking monogamy and polyamory out of the equation, I'm talking about that soulmate juicy connection where that stuff isn't even a conversation anymore. You know, right. that commitment right. is we're doing this and this is us and let's go and we're not going to let my fears and my insecurities and your fears and your past and we're just not going to let any of that stuff get in our way. We're going to have fun. We're going to dive in and we're going to work with what we got here, you know? Um, right. Hi, Lonnie. Right. Hi. Um, so, yeah, we're all looking for that. So that's great that when people yeah, say, I right. want that too, me too, me too, me too. That's yeah. a whole new Me Too movement, right? A more exciting and fun, right. you know, exuberant one. So I will, I, I don't know where we're at for time, but I want to dip a little bit into the Peter Pan side of things, if we can. Um, you, we give me a little five minute warning. Are we there yet? Is it already happening? Yeah, well, I'll let you okay. know. All right, cool. So I'm sorry, everything wasn't set up correctly. That's because okay. We're, we're perfect. So many problems. We're in the, we're in the flow zone. We're in the in the. Yeah, in the, yeah. The, we the got time. Spot. Go, yeah. go for it. So the Peter Pan syndrome. Now the plot twist is that a lot of women are becoming Peter Pans. Okay, so yes. a lot of women who come to me are saying, "I've had an affair. I, you know, blah blah blah. I've scattered my energies. I've been, you know, having these emotional affairs or flirting with this one and that one because they're seeking and they're hungry and they're looking for that intimacy, that nurturing, that rock, that oak, that solid person." The right, dependable, right. consistent one who they don't have to wonder or worry about what he's up to. The one they can trust, right? So now the women are becoming that. And the men are freaking out. <laughs> and they're going, what's she doing? Where is she? Who is she talking to? Blah, blah, blah. And, and it's not a good energy in either gender. It's a sleazy, right. slimy, gross, yeah, repellent yep. energy, okay? Yep. And, and, I mean, we can have compassion and empathy for this on both sides. And not, not judgment, even though I'm throwing all these harsh words out. But it's not an energy that's going to get you love. It's not. Right. It's an energy that's going to right. get you chaos, confusion, conflict, tension, pain, you know, and you're going to keep replaying those old stories and old songs in your head if you don't change the vibe. So it's changing right. the vibe is yep. moving out of, oh, I don't want to ever want to grow up because a marriage would be a cage to my freedom or then I'd have to close all the other doors and all my other options would suddenly be gone and um, or I'm not cut out for long-term, deeper intimacy. I'm really bad at it or whatever stupid bullshit story any of us tell ourselves. Women, at, right. right? So Peter right. Pan is someone who I got told recently, you like, you just want to be spoiled. And like, it was a criticism. I'm like, yeah, I do. Cause you know what? I've always been the <laughs> one spoiling everybody else all the time, all the time, all the time. I've been the one wiping asses and noses and, and giving and doing and outputting. And yeah, so now I want to be spoiled. And I want to be nurtured and I want to be cared for. Yes, right. mutual, all that yep. beautiful. Absolutely. And, but we do bring complementary different energies to this, right? So Peter Pan mm -hmm. is someone who is scattering their energies and not focused in what their desires are. Their true, clear, pure heart desires. They're in their mind a lot. They're very, yes. you know, like flighty. And I'm not saying I haven't been both of these. I've been all of these roles. I've been the crocodile, the mermaid, Captain Hook, Peter Pan, and Wendy. Oh, I agree. Absolutely. These are archetypes that we all weave in and out of, depending on what's yeah. going on inside you and around you, um, which we know is very connected and related, vibrationally speaking. So, so Peter Pan 
you know, he flies, he laughs, he's lighthearted, but he is also kind of a dad figure to the Lost Boys, which often gets missed. He takes care of them. Then he's looking for someone, like a partner, to come help him take care of the Lost Boys, and he finds Wendy, which, of course, pisses Tink off, because she's like, hello, I've been here all along, dumbass, you know? Right. And right. so this is their little dysfunctional <laughs> family in Neverland, and, right? And then you've got right, the dog, right. Anna, who's the, the nanny, and I don't know why they thought a dog should take care of children, but that's... It's, whimsical and it's playful and jay and barry did a lot of drugs so so god right. bless them <laughs> you know, back in the day. <laughs> it's a great story we're gonna go with it but we're using it and we're updating and upgrading it to right. to right. say okay but is that a kind of a model for and then giving tree we could do 10 videos on about how that's terrible and martyrdom and the wendy syndrome is like oh this tree just keeps giving this boy just keeps taking he just takes and takes right. and takes and he never right. knows how to give back yeah she's saying right you know she, she could be sitting there saying water me I need some water. And he's like, well, you know, I think I'm going to go for, you know, a walk and blah, blah, blah. No, please water me. I need some water. And he's like totally oblivious, that kid, right? So Peter Pan is, is, has some responsibilities, even though he's very frivolous and whimsical and flighty. He does have his core people that he takes care of. He has his, his tribe, his family, are the Lost Boys. And he doesn't really care if they're clean or if they're well-fed or if they're sleeping okay, or, you know, that's Wendy's job. She comes in and she kind of is the discipline and she's the one that says, okay, let's, you know, make sure that everybody is loved, feels loved. And right. then when she gives right. this mama love at them and they just soak it up, like they're like little flowers hungry for yeah, that mama right. love because we're all little orphan boys, right. right? And so yeah. Peter Pan and Wendy are, they have the potential to be good sovereign mutual partners as long as Peter Pan doesn't lean too heavily on Wendy and as long as Wendy doesn't coddle Peter Pan too much. So what we really want is probably a whole other story where they grow up together in a beautiful right, way yeah. and that that doesn't have to be a trap, that we can still be magical and grown up, that we can still be responsible and do our adulting things and still be spontaneous and fun and free and wild, right? Right. So we can be all of it. All of it. We can be, we can be all of it. We don't have to be one way or another. We can be all of it. Yeah. Yeah. We are all of it. Right. So it's how we, Oh, I love, thank you for saying that. It's not that we can be all of it. We are all of that. And so it's yes, just choosing right. what versions of those expressions we want to emanate. So if you right. want to, so there's a lot of neediness in that story, isn't there? There's a lot of hunger yes. and a lot of, of lostness and a lot of themes of, you know, getting out of the adult world and being kind of free and wild on the one hand, but also being lost and confused on the other. And so we, are, that's a really good metaphor for where the planet is right now, if you want to think of it. Right, you're right. We've got yeah. the unbelievable lost boy who never will grow up in the White House right now. He will never grow up. 3 a.m. tweets, mean, bullying, snarky, you know, told yeah. to women. He's just the worst. Thank you, Michael Fox. Bless you and your wisdom. Um, see, I love to see men tuning in and supporting. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you. I know. I'm going to be talking to Michael Fox today, by the way. <laughs> by the way, Michael, by the way, I'm calling you. <laughs> Yay, good. Excellent. So, so anyway, yeah, so not to get off on the Cheeto, but we have a lot of um, toxic masculinity that we are transmuting. Peter Pan mm -hmm. can be the whimsical, eternal child, which can be innocent and magical, or it can become mm -hmm. a toxic, stagnant character that we don't... Yeah. Right. We don't move beyond, okay? Right. You know, right. someone who trades in wives and, and goes out and golf course and whiskey and cigars, like the archetype of just never going to grow up, going to do what I want. Right. Know, fuck you world. And, and really just, again, that giving tree where he takes and takes and takes and takes. It's all about him, right? Lisa, I love that. And one day... The I hate you giving tree. I wouldn't you hate it. I love that. It's a terrible story, <laughs> terrible example, the worst ever. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. That is and yet awesome. we're all doing it. We're all giving trees. But okay, so what I've learned and what, I, you know, again, intellectually, I'm learning to apply it myself is a woman in her sacred expression is naturally a fountain and she just radiates and beams and flows and overflows with love. That's different than what we talked about earlier, being obligation or guilt vibration of I have to do this rather than or resentment rather than, oh, I feel so good. I want to share. I want to share my life with someone. Oh, my gosh. It's freeing. It is freeing to have that in the in the one area of my life that I hate doing, yeah. but I feel so good doing it now because, because it's not expected. It's not. It's not, it's not unappreciated when it happens. 
Right. And it's something right. that it's a gift of love. And it's just a, a yeah. Yeah, it's not it's not work. It is a joy. And then when we when we sit down and we eat, it's not that I'm expected to clear the table. It is we both do it. It's very much everything that we do, whether it's laundry, if he sees laundry needs to be done, he just does it. If he sees something that needs to be fixed, he just fixes it. I don't have to ask anything, Courtney. And that is the joy of going from being with a Peter Pan to a, a man that he is playful in and and a little boy at the right time you want to keep so that you don't want to us lose being that. partner yeah yeah i That's love important. that about him yeah. he is, it's sexy. he's my playmate he's my, my, my i mean yes. Yeah, yeah, but he's he, equal partners. In, he's sexier. <laughs> it's equal partners. There's no roles for either one of us. We just do everything, and that's what's out there. And Perry said, you know, I that's what I'm looking for. And Perry, if it's a desire in your heart, it's out there for you. It's out there for all of us. Yeah. It is just taking away those. It's opening up to what really we can have. Yeah. So instead of what we've always, we, we've gotten used to accepting for ourselves. We've been trained to think we want, right? Yeah, so right. I, ironically, this all said, I just, even though I'm a very modern feminist in many ways, I still am a traditionalist in other ways too. I do want a family to nurture, you know, to co-create that. I feel like I've had a lot of practice with other people's families. Yes. Okay. So Lisa Vallejos is saying, too many women try to exchange doing to get love. Like it's a yep. transactional yep. exchange. She's so yep. right. Yeah. Rather than, yep. I think we're going to prove ourselves. Oh, you love me now. Can you see me now? Am I worthy now? You know, please, please, you know, see me, see me, see me. We just feel so invisible a lot of times because we're either ignored or when we are visible, we're mocked. We're denigrated. We're disrespected. You know, I have guys on Instagram writing fucking hate poetry about me. That's okay. That's cool. Do you think that's going to work? Because that's like a braid pulling, like the teaching guys negging now, these younger guys, yeah. to just try to undermine you and poke at you and pull you down rather than build you up. That ain't going to ever work. That's never going to get a woman who knows who she is and what she wants to pay attention to you in any meaningful, lasting way. You will right. not get the right. kind of relationship you want. See me, yeah, see me, love me now. I call it the see me daddy. Love me daddy, love me daddy. You know, my dad would drag me around from a you know, work thing to work thing and I'd always be like drawing or writing or coloring in the corner. Thank him because he d developed my creativity because I was alone a lot while he was off, you know, doing whatever, phone calls, meetings, blah, 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 you know, emails, what a, you know, busy guy. So, so I've learned to develop my inner life and I've learned um, what feels good in partnership and what doesn't and I'm moving more towards the what feels good and I'm letting go of, of the past and releasing what doesn't. And it feels really good to sort of be hopeful and think about, well, what would this look like? He's like to add men are doing the same mistake of what Lisa wrote. Yes. People pleasing, trying to perform for love, peacocking, trying to, you know, get her to see you, love you, you know, rather than just relaxing into who you are and she's going to come to you like the butterfly that will land on your shoulder. It doesn't mean you can't do stuff to show her, but it's more of a natural organic flow. Like what Trisha's saying right. she has with her dude. It isn't just like, I ha I'm here to impress you. I'm here to show you how big, important, and amazing I am. Because that usually turns us off where we just laugh at you and, and kind of want to pat your head and send you on your way. We want the right. guy who kind of will sit and you're just ha talking about your day and he's rubbing your feet and he's present and he's available. And there aren't like 9 million things going on that are pulling his focus and his energy. He's really into you and with you and absorbing. Yeah, you, you, maybe you two should date. <laughs> They're going back and forth. <laughs> Peter Pan, it's not to smash Peter Pan or to say that he's wrong or that he's a, you know, it's, it's, yeah, putting up a being mask. Who he is. Yeah, being more vulnerable, yeah. Perry, what you're saying is so true. He's saying that, you know, men will put on a mask and then be afraid to take that mask off like we won't love you. Oh, honey, we're going to love you so much more when you take that mask off. Believe me, we're going to feel yeah. safe. Right. We're going to feel loved and relaxed that you opened yeah. up to us in that way. We're going to feel cherished mm -hmm. and adored that you've trusted us with that vulnerability and yeah we're going to be sassy and sometimes we're going to bust your balls and we're going to be playful and silly and, and maybe hurt your feelings but guess what welcome to women's worlds where you guys have been tramping on trampling all over our feelings forever and we never fucking stood up for ourselves or said hey don't do that i don't like it right we never did so that's Wendy. Wendy's just the, you know, people pleaser, the nice one, the polite, the kind, the compassionate, the loving, the, you know, come on. That's great. Except it's 1952. We're in 2018 now, you know? 
So I think it's really important when women are pissed off and frustrated to tell the man and let him know. And we can do it in a way that doesn't demolish or, you know, annihilate. We can do it, but, you know, we can't always hold back anymore either. You know, that repression of authentic expression of emotion is right. what men are hungry for and what they really, truly, right. truly need. Yeah. Well, let's, so Courtney, what are we going to talk about on Thursday? So um, we can just go deeper into this. We can talk about how to, yeah, we, then we can talk about how to avoid situations like this. But more importantly, how to get into a vibrational space where you're not even attracting situations like this anymore. You're attracting a oh, higher yeah. level, higher yeah. version of the game where you're kind of starting to evolve into it. And this is something that I'm still learning. Again, um, with ease and grace, I call in ease and grace for all my interactions and my intimate connections going forward. I, I set that intention for it to be loving and fun and playful. And there can be complications and confusions along the way. That's human but that the core heart feeling is one of juiciness and nourishment. Yeah. Love it. I love it. Can't so wait we, to yeah, now we kind of like, We kind of laid down what it is and what we don't want. Yes. We'll go more into what feels good and what we do want. And you give it, you gave yes. us some teasers and tastes of that from yes. your, your experience of saying, Hey, it's possible. You can go from mm -hmm. someone who never wants to leave the house or th thinks you're yes. like their mom to someone who wants to have adventures with you and go alongside right. the journey yep. together. And I got to tell you guys, th this is the greatest life that I've ever known. Yay. It's worth it. It's worth it. Well, oh my gosh. Well deserved. I've watched you on your journey. I have to say for you guys who don't know Trisha, she's a bright light as you can see from and hear from her. And she's going to be doing amazing things. And uh, Oprah and Ellen move over because here comes Trisha. I'm just saying. <laughs> 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 no, there's room for us well, all. There's room note. for us all. There's yeah. All. <laughs> well, on that note, we got it. We have to cut this short, unfortunately. But fortunately, at 11 o'clock in less than 30 minutes, Lori Green will be coming on uh, for uh, her for her video. So stay tuned, Courtney. I love you. Thank you so much for your presence here. I just I, I love you. I adore you. I love your realness you. and uh, your badassery. Right back at you, baby. <laughs> All right, we'll see. You. We'll see. You. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.